One of the questions that comes up quite a lot is the appropriate use of transitions. Now, by default, we know that we've already got quite a few transitions that we can use on our timeline without thinking about it. We've got the fade from black or the fade to black by hovering over the beginning or the end of a clip. We can pull that down and when you click on it, you can see that you're going to fade from black. And you can do the same at the end of a clip, you can fade to black. So you've got a fade from black or a fade to black at the beginning or at the end of a timeline, which is a great way to introduce things and bring things in nice and quietly or slowly. We've also got the cross dissolves by dragging one clip over another clip with it enabled up here with that icon checked. You can create cross fades and when you click and play, they're great ways of fading between various bits of footage to show people what was going on. However, there is a danger that because they're so easy to create that we overuse them inside Sony Vegas Pro. And transitions should be used, in my opinion, quite sparingly. On the whole, transitions should really be a jump cut between the two. So if I go to this one, you'll see that there's no transition when I push play. It goes between one and cuts straight to the other without a transition. So if I go here, I've got the same thing. The boy's running back and then to the castle. On the whole, the audience is intelligent enough and well-versed enough in watching things on TV that they understand that the story moves on, things change, and jump cuts are usually invisible. So you usually only use transitions when you need to go between clips that are non-matching, or there is a good storytelling reason for you to put a transition in there. Now transitions, by and large, if you're going to use them at all, are going to be fades from black or fade to black. They're going to be cross dissolves. Those are the most used by a long, long way. However, you'll see in Sony Vegas, there is a category, there's a tab over here, Project Media Explorer Transitions, where there are a whole load of different transitions which have been added to Sony Vegas Pro for us to use. And you say, well, why are they there if we shouldn't use them very much? Well, they're there when you need to say that you are moving your story on. Your story has gone so far and you are going to move to a new chapter. Or your story moves location from one place to another place. Or you're introducing a new character. When a major part of your story is changing, then it might be appropriate to use a more obvious transition. But even then, you need to be careful. There's a whole bunch of transitions in here, which I look at and I think, you know, I'd never use those because they're just too obvious. However, some of them are going to be great because they tell the audience something's changing. OK, so how do we use these transitions? I've clicked on the category called clock wipe and you can see how the clock wipes work. You can hover over any of them. You can get a preview for how they look. So I'm going to go for the first one, just the default, and I'm going to click and drag and drop it over the transition between two items. And when you drop it over the transition, you get the little plus button. OK, and when you drop it between on there, you're going to get your transition applied. I'm just going to go over the top of it. I've taken my current time indicator there and zooming in. And then you can see it says it's one second. If I click on it, you can see it says it's one second long transition. And I've got some effects controls up here. Now, it's the first time we've seen this in this series, but you can change the feather angle. So if you look at the feather angle, let's just make it a little bit more obvious. Uh, maybe there you can see the feather angle. You can actually physically play with it, how big the feather is and how it works, whether it's really sharp or whether it's really feathered and what angle it's going to be. So you do have some control over these things. If you double click it, it'll return to its default settings, which is useful. You can also change its direction counterclockwise or clockwise. So you can apply these things. You can even animate them. We won't do that at the moment. But you can apply it. But what you can't do is go in and change the length in the timeline. If you try and change the length of the transition, you will just trim the clips. You don't change the length of the transition here in the timeline. You change it in your preferences. So let me show you. We're going back to Option. And we're going down to Preferences. And we're going to look for the Editing tab. And when you get to the editing tab, it's these two items here that we need to look at. One says cut to overlap conversion seconds. It would be really helpful if it said transition length, but it doesn't. It says cut to overlap conversion seconds. It is one second by default. I'm going to make it two. OK, and there is an alignment option here, which we'll come to a bit later on. I'm going to click apply, click OK, but look. The transition that's already in my timeline has not been affected, which is exactly the way you want it to be. 
If you've already got a transition applied, the last thing you want it to do is be changed when you change a preference. So what I'm going to do is find another transition. Here's another transition here. That's a jump cut at the moment. And I'm going to apply the same clock wipe and drop it over there. Get the little plus sign and let go. And notice it is two seconds long. It's exactly the same transition. I can change the settings if I want. But it's two seconds long because I changed it in my preferences. And now we can have a look. And sometimes a slower transition can just give people more warning of a major change. But sometimes a faster transition is going to be a great way of hiding something. So you need to be a little bit careful about the length that you make your transitions. And remember that you can change them in your options. Go down to your preferences. Go to the editing tab and change the length of this cuts to overlap conversion. I'm going to take it back to a second because that usually is the default length. What about this business of cut on center? What's all that about? Well, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to shut this down. And I'm going to Control Z. OK, I've got rid of that one. I've still got this one applied here. By the way, if you want to get rid of it on the timeline, if you right click on it and you've got transition, you can convert to a cut. And that gets rid of any transitions you've got on there. So you can actually get rid of it that way. Or you can Control Z to go backwards. It all depends how far back in your editing time you've done it. But you can always right click and, and get rid of it that way. Now, I'm going to create a, a new project. So I'm going to get rid of these. I'm not going to save anything. And I'm going to get some media in from my Media Explorer. And I'm going to, I've got a couple actually I've loaded previously. Let's have a look at these ones. So I've got this one here, which has got media that goes to the end there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can see it zooming in at the end there. That's fine. And at the beginning, it just starts at the beginning. Now, under usual circumstances, what you would do is an in point and an out point, And you've got footage before your in point, which is kind of header footage and footage after your out point, which is tail footage. This is the footage that's used in the transition. So you see the main clip, but this would be used in the transition. This would be used in the transition so that you could see the main clip. If I now pull this to the beginning of the item and drop it on my timeline, so let's, uh, let's stick it here. So there is no head footage. OK, and then take another clip. I'm going to take the flags here and I'm going to do an in point here and an out point there and take that down so that's got plenty of head and tail footage I'm going to pull that up okay so they're meeting here and I'm going to apply a transition so let's do our clock wipes again and put it over the top and let's just have a little look and see what it looks like as it goes through I'm going to do it by using the side arrows I'm going to go through you can see that everything's fine with the flags now you've got to watch this carefully so I'm going to go forward step by step by step now look at the image behind. This is, remember, the image behind, the second image, is the one that doesn't have any headroom. What I want you to see is at this point, can you see the rocks here and the C, and then keep going, keep going, and snap. Can you see it changed? It's taking footage from the end of the clip. It's basically looping it, and then bringing it back to the beginning. So you're kind of getting bits from the end of the clip brought in so you're getting this kind of weird jumping snapping effect which you want to avoid at all costs now this is where that option for starting at a cut and ending at a cut comes in so I'm going to right click on here and get rid of that transition convert to a cut so we haven't got a transition and I'm going to go to my options and down to preferences and I'm going to go back to editing and I'm going to look it's centered on a cut and what if we now say that the transition takes place after the cut because up to the cut, there's nothing. So if I do after the cut and I click OK, and I bring it back into the transition, and I drop the transition over the top, notice it's gone after the cut. Zoom in a bit there, so you can see. So there's the, the actual cut. It's gone after the cut. So that when I play through, I'm just going to step through that, it's only using footage that is there. It's not going to loop back footage that wasn't there in the first place. OK, so if your transitions look really weird, something odd has happened just bear in mind it is taking footage from another point at the end of the clip and putting it into the beginning to try and fill the space where there is no footage so that's where those options come into play go back to options preferences and go to your editing and then you can play with after the cut before the cut if there's no tail room if there's no tail footage because what will happen is it'll still 
footage from the beginning of your clip again, which can look really weird, or if you've got plenty of head and tail footage, like this clip here, which has got, I'm just going to click cancel, which has got plenty of headroom and plenty of tail room. If you've got that, then you can actually choose to center on the cut. If both clips have got that, because that will mean that you're going to use the head and tail footage, which generally speaking is okay. But even then, sometimes people cut the camera far too early and you end up with footage you don't want. And that's when you can go back to before cut, after cut and make your choices there. So that's transitions, a little bit of talk about transitions. I hope you found this tutorial useful and that you'll be able to use your transitions more wisely. My name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching.